Welcome to Warblog. Today we are going to look at. Oh, I was wondering why that was there. It's that. We're going to look at the fall of Taejong. It's interesting, actually. Um, I love <laughs> saying that because every time I say it, it is interesting. But this sort of follows on from. Um, these two other battles. Um, the 19th defense of the Cum River line and the Battle of Cum River. Now, in retrospect, I think the setup for these is not quite as it was, and I might read do the lot. Now one of the things I wanted to say about this that is sort of quite interesting is when I started the Korean War I, I basically got a big book on it, I don't have it in front of me, it's the Forgotten War, um, Nigel Child or something, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I started from the beginning, so that's how I've got these first battles. Um, Presumably further down here, such as um, Palsani and the Han River crossing. Uh, these all happened a little earlier. You know, this is the 5th and the 8th of July, the um, Chonan delaying action. So I started from the beginning. And it's, it, that was interesting, really, because it sort of. It's given me. Uh, I, I jumped much later in just to get these two battles. Um, but I basically um, I started from the beginning and it, I just really didn't have any idea about the ebb and flow of the Korean War and um, and then this is one of the first ones I did way back and and <laughs> this is in the back of my mind I haven't actually put any Koreans on to be quite honest I should go back and just at least put something on but this is the Pusan line um, but Thing is, I've got no back button on this. Can't just sort of press the back button because it's hidden by the um, controls for this video. So I have to just sort of go back through this way, I guess. Um, but anyway, so when I got to the first one, the um, Battle of Com River, which is on the, I think, on the the day before the 19th, so it'd be that it's the 15th of July. I had read through, I had actually read through, so I've read this through about a million times now, through to um, Taejon and uh, the end of the first chapter, basically, which is when the, um, the you know, the, the the US and the UN started their offensives from from Busan. Um, but basically, I, so I had read it all the way through, but even so, going back, I was just picking out things that seemed significant and, you know, in their own right, in the order that I read them. So, and I got the Battle of Com River, and then, you know, I got to the next day, and there's this other one, this other big battle, also called the, the Battle of um, Com River. So I, I was a bit stuck as to what, it call, what to call it. Um... I could have called it just the defense of Com River Line, but it seems the 19th is a bit sort of specific to what it was, but it was. I mean, it was the 19th um, Regiment um, that, that was sort of doing it. But, but I, you know, if I'd sort of known that, what I could have maybe done is actually do this as one big game that has, you know, the, tw the 15th and the 16th all integrated into it. And the reason I'm sort of laboring on this point is because when you get to Taejon, it's again, it's the same thing. It's, it starts very close to the river, and, and really they're all part of the same battle. And the fall of Taejon does actually sort of extend in some of its narrative back down to the, um, the, the, the Kum River scenario here, which is the 34th, the collapse of the 34th. So when you look at this, you can almost see that 19th of the defense there. And the thing is, they weren't along there, as I've put them, they were actually there. According to this record, but this is from the 20th, so I'm not sure where, where there actually is. But 
the point is I've, I've seen an, well, one of the observations that I've, I'm hoping to make in the video is that I've um, just, just as an observation is that I've actually found a map that sort of details the at least the um, the 18th or the, the 16th as it is the 19th defense on the Cum River line um, that actually details it somewhat uh, more specific to, to, to the layout that I used uh, and one of the things was I did actually guess wildly I didn't know and that so that map really I need to go back and redo it and reset it um, should be still the same sort of battle um, and yeah but anyway so so ideally and that was I came to that revelation after I'd even started this map so ideally what I could do back do is go back and actually do the whole thing so from the 15th all the way through to Tejon now that I've put the pieces together I picked the pieces up and put them together and, and come up with a revelation or a Eureka or a QED or something you know they didn't make any sense and I think that's one of the interesting things about war blogs because you can pick up you know all these different bits and just like any any other learning tool they help you put the story together and now I've got quite a solid and concrete understanding of at least the basic ebbs and flows of the, the Korean War all the way I don't really have it all the way through but they've got most of it. I mean, basically, they're attacking, and then there's two years of pretty much sort of stagnant warfare up in the north. Um, to be honest, I've still got a long way to go because I haven't really got, you know, the the, the burst out from uh, Busan or anything other than Incheon. But you know, just knowing that is sort of something. Um, and also, just as a side note, just. To, I've yet to actually come across a book that actually details with the focus the um, the rock units. The I think it's Blair Clay, Benjamin Clay, Blair Clay. I don't know. I think actually he did the um, I've forgotten what the book I was referring to. And um, he basically starts in, in you know starts off in his introduction by stating that his entire book, which is like two inches thick or three inches thick. Is is actually simply from the American U.S. focus, and he's done nothing on the the rock units or where they are. Now I've read after that, I was sort of on the lookout for other books on the Korean War, and I've bought a few. I've probably got about four other books, um, all, all of sort of varying calibre, and none of them focus on the rock units. They all say exactly the same thing, with a big focus on the U.S. units. So my familiarity with it is is all. Is base is skewed by that, but also I think that's the another part of what I want to try and figure out. Get a clear sort of history of um, the movements of the rock units in the same capacity, because at, at this at this sort of particular moment, just sort of you know north of here somewhere, um, you know maybe quite a, a way off, the, um, the the rock units were sort of fighting the North Koreans, um, and they were doing it all the way across that line uh, to to the, to the east. So you know, not not just up here, but all the way across to the east from this side, pretty much. And, and so they must have had some interesting battles. I mean, you, you know, obviously they lost them all and then pushed back to the Busan perimeter. But you, you know, I've yet to actually look at those ones. And probably in there somewhere on a Wikipedia page. I just don't know what, exactly where to look. But um, yeah, so that's the other side of that. But this this is so uh, we'll get into the sort of game. And I'm not going to play all of it. I might make a few moves or something. Um, but the first sort of thing to let's do in yellow sort of consider is basically according to sort of the battle map, what they did, they they come across here, and they also come down here somehow. And down here, so there's these lines showing the Korean movements. And so I think, well, okay, well, how did they do that? They must have gone over this, somehow bridged this this river, or did they come through here and, and down here? Or did they actually come up through here? Should I have some, you know, put in here? I don't know. Um, and then, obviously, they they go towards it, but they also come up this way. So what they end up doing is surrounding Taejon one way or the other. So the, what I'm getting to with that is that that's the sort of 
their movement and they do manage to surround it. Now this is the I think the 19th and this is the 34th, but 34th regiment units from. There's also the 21st and they actually should have joined up at Taejon, but the, um, the the rock units actually sort of you know they snuck around here and they, they kept a sort of an ambush line along there um, that the 21st couldn't get through. So the 21st sort of come up here and they sort of sit like that, according to the map. So now the thing, so you've got to bear that in mind as an objective and you know the reality of the situation is sort of not that simple um, in that you've actually got to get this unit to that line, which is a long way. I did look, there doesn't seem to be any paths or anything, so it's going to be, you know, it's going to take one to cross the river, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now, it'll take him sixteen turns if he can do that without anything interfering him and get there and that's only the front unit now there's two in there so you can get two up in 16 turns in 18 turns the 21st come on so you've got in theory 16 turns to get there but you could possibly get two units there and then you've got to start moving up the road they'd have to sort of you know they could probably only be by there by the time they come on you've got to get the rest of a lot of this stuff together to hold the 21st off there now on the other hand it's one of these things where the actual um, line they had was more ambushy um, I don't know what it is to block the road it must have been doing something along those lines um, this is the um, the, 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 the North Koreans sort of 21st from coming through um but uh, what's talking about now? Yeah, well what well, what well, what I'm saying is that basically you could play this battle that was what I was trying to say, I remember now you you could play this battle with the twenty first possibly and fighting aggressively with them or you could let the 21st come on because they only come on for historic reasons that's the only reason I've included them and then just leave them there because you only basically when you read the description they didn't block it it didn't say they had a front line across here it was like ambush alley they were setting ambushes along here so presumably they all they did was pull their armor up and set their you know mortar teams up close and heavy machine guns and things like that to really interdict this road um, so much so that the 21st didn't join them, but they kept attacking to try and open up the road and s allow this as a, an escape route for the, the other two regiments. Um, but the thing is, because it, that was more of a historic thing that happened, so it happened, you know, they weren't saying, oh, we've got to stop these because they'll block us and sort of 21st come on. They didn't know that this is how it evolved, this was the history that, that came out of it. Um, but to complete that, it might be a bit tight, so you might want to role play it. So you say, well, I've got to do that, I've got to commit these units there, but as long as I've got something there, they're going to hold the whole 21st back. Because you could probably still, because it's a big unit, you could probably still pound straight through whatever they can get there in turn in 20 turns, and then, you know, join up and actually maybe win this scenario. Um, so that was sort of the point I was trying to get to. With that, you could play with the 21st or, or without them, so you've got a couple of, sort of options on that game. Um, anyway, let me go into play mode. It's all a bit tight, but you've got artillery and you've got engineers. Now, the engineers, I just happen to put where the road points are. So you're still going to go very slowly because there's no road and that's the only way I could do it. If I put a road there, there would be actually a, a connection there. But basically, you've got the option of taking the easy in and just building a bridge straight off. And same here, building a bridge straight off. Um, but you could move them, say, down here and build a bridge there. Um, just as another point on that sort of that race to sort of, you know, ambush alley, 
I did actually make these rivers small rivers for that purpose. They were actually blue all the way up to the end, but otherwise you wouldn't be able to get there. There would be no way of getting there at all, so I put them as, as blue. But anyway, so you've got the option to build these bridges. Um, first off, or you could you know make other choices. And you've got our artillery, which is sort of useful, but I've also it also put some artillery in range here, so you've got one unit there and one unit there. Um yep. But the main sort of regimental artillery is all over here. But I only did that just to counter this, because otherwise you could just sit there um blowing these units up, there's nothing to stop them. And and I have have actually sort of designated these. I haven't done it in in, in the, the name naming or anything like that, but they're they're actually in my mind's eye just more like heavy mortars, you know, as opposed to sort of you know artillery. You've got the same sort of strengths, um, but you know that's how I envisage justifying. Because sometimes I'll say if they've got mortar units, I'll just use these counters because they do the same thing, which is giving them a very short range. Um, but anyway, th these were not detailed on the map. I just put them there, otherwise they would just be able to ping these off. So here will be a little more of a challenge. Um, and then there's the units. Now they all come on staggered. There's quite a lot of them. There's 15 on either side. So there's 30 altogether. Um, it's just an arbitrary number, really. Um, but I think in the first instance, I'm going to cross the river. And then I think, well, let's build this bridge. Oh, I know. They're not available yet. I won't be able to do that till next turn, if at all. I have to remember that. Ah, okay. Um, that's interesting. That means I'll have to play more historically. No effect. Two damage. That's more like it. And that's very much more like it. Okay, there's nothing more to do. Now the interesting thing in this is that you could probably set up again. I'm sure there was something supposed to be there. But you know, from now on, the history of it all just goes out the window. I mean, probably makes sense to leave those across there and leave these across here. Um, but there's these units here. Now I'm going to role play that we don't really sort of, we're not doing much anyway. We can't. The only thing I could possibly do is start moving these down, anticipating that they're going to come down from here. Um, so that's it, but what we'll do is attack with these engineering units. I'm not sure why I'm bothering really because they're going to build the bridges. It just seems that if they didn't exist, they would have a much harder time of it. Okay. Now, are the engineers available? Yes. They should have been available last turn, I'll sort that out later. So we now have a bridge. It always amazes me that that works. Because bridge building was actually quite difficult. 
Chris being played out for two years and still amazes me. Hmm, that's interesting. Because the, there's two, obviously. I don't know why I did two. I just wanted to make it easier to sort of build lots of places sort of, um, quicker rather than later. Mainly because they weren't actually necessarily building bridges. A lot of it was just sort of, they were crossing in little boats and things like that. That's actually what it represents. So they should be able to do it a little more dynamically. But you know, there's two bridge heads there now. And let's continue pounding on this unit. So it's down two, one point eight. Oh no, it's point seven and one point one. Okay. Two point six. That one must have taken a pounding. Six point three, point five. Hmm. Can't move him. So that's that. Okay, do we want to go for that engineer again? See, that is the point, really. Probably better off actually going for the artillery. But choppy and changey like that just. Isn't what I want to be doing. I have to commit to take damage in this artillery. And the same thing here. Okay, so there it turns up. We're not actually going to move anything. So we've got now 2.8, 5.3 hmm. <laughs> I should have figured that out. That was a difficult to guess. Build another bridge.
That's interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, so what's he on now? 4.3. I can't move anything because I, I, I'm overstacked. That is bizarre. There is one way I could do it. I could actually move one of these engineering units off the board. Oh no, 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 no. That's a sort of design error, really, because it just makes the situation stupid <laughs> because they can't get to the bridges. I'd have to move one artillery unit there. Oh, well, I'm going to leave it at that. Anyway, um, I'll have to think, have a think about that. Um, I'm going to sort of go to sleep as well. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I'll speak to you later. Cheerio!